This is Scott in the old curiosity shop. It is a cold, rainy time right here in the Northeast. So I've got a nice warm fire and a bunch of vintage things to share with you. So I hope you'll watch and enjoy seeing the things that I picked up this week and they're all gonna be for sale in the old curiosity shop on eBay. So let's get right into it. I'll start with this. I bought 10 of these and they are, well this is, made by the Imperial Glass Company and um, it's called Cape Cod. The pattern is called Cape Cod. These are five inch uh, wine glasses. Did I tell you about 10 of these? I did. They were five for three dollars, so six bucks for 10 of them. I should be able to sell the 10 for about 25 to 30 dollars. Cape Cod was made by, as I said, the Imperial Glass Company. It's a really heavy, almost chunky kind of depression glass. And it had a long run. It was made from 1932 into the 80s. So there's a lot of it out there, but it is a popular pattern. Avon also made a pattern called Cape Cod, so look out when you see things advertised as um, Cape Cod pattern. Um, and this is really what would be called an elegant depression glass pattern. This is a scale from the 1950s when people used to actually, uh, you know, weigh everything in their kitchens. Uh, it works perfectly well, as you can see. And it's uh, the face on it is nice and clean. Um, there's very little rust on it, and it works perfectly well. This was three dollars. That I actually got a week ago today at a flea market. It's raining today, so we really didn't have flea markets here in this area, but we did have them last weekend. This I picked up in a Goodwill store for $2, $1.99. But it was President's Day. So for my, well, President's Day was Monday, and so everything was half off in the store. So I was really filling, my, filling up my cart. So I got this for one buck. It's unmarked. I'm not, I don't have a problem with that because the colors are so, and the shape is so iconic. This looks like it came right off of the set of I Dream of Jeannie. Somebody who's doing a mid-century 1960s decor is gonna want that. I guess I'll probably put 1960s pottery vase unmarked. What should I sell it for? $14.99? Is that too cheap or too expensive? <sighs> Pricing is sometimes difficult for me. Um, I'm starting a new category in the old curiosity shop called tourist souvenirs. Just to see how well it does, you know, you've got to experiment sometimes and see where it goes. These are two um, of the items that are going to be that I picked up this week that are tourist, um, tourist, tourist souvenirs from the 1960s. One of them is marked uh, Siesta Ware. The other one is an imitation of Siesta Ware. Can you tell which one is Siesta Ware and which one is not? I bet you can't. Did you say this one is the Siesta Ware? Wrong. This one is made in Taiwan, which is perfectly fine. They were imitating um, Siesta Ware, which is this one. And you, you will be able to see that mark, I think, clearly, Siesta Ware. Okay. Um, this one is advertising the Jersey Shore town of Ocean City, New Jersey. Great place, I spent a lot of time there as a kid. I still love to go there as an adult. It's a beautiful um, barrier island um, in Jersey. Great boardwalk. And this is New York City. So you have all the iconic images, Empire State Building and everything else. Um, these were 50 cents each, cheap, inexpensive, and as I said, these are going to go into the category in my shop called Tourist Souvenirs. That's where these are going to go. 
These were made by what company? Can you tell? These are frosted glasses that uh, advertise the states. Here is Florida. See? And that, it's really hard with this frosting. That one doesn't look like it's marked. I, they all, were all made by the same company though. Uh, these are both marked. I'll show you in a second. Here's North and South Carolina. And I was surprised when I went online to check. These do sell for various amounts, between five to 10 bucks. Uh, 19, late 50s, we'll say 1955 to 1965. Uh, and can you see who made them? I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna try to. You see the, uh, you're not gonna be able to see it. Let's try this one. Can you see that? The HA? Hazel Atlas, that's right. Not A-H, it's not Anchor Hawking. Some people make that mistake. They see, they see that and they think it's A-H, but it's H-A for Hazel Atlas. And I'm really trying to, to get you to be able to see it. There it is. H-A Hazel Atlas. All right, enough of that. So this is my little tourist souvenir shop. Uh, this place is Wisconsin, as you can see. So I'm going to be picking up these little touristy things from the different states. It's not marked. Now, wouldn't someone who lived in Wisconsin and let's say moved to Virginia or moved to California or Philly, wouldn't they love to have this? They would. And they can in the old curiosity shop on eBay. This was a buck, and I'll probably try to sell it for, I don't know, $9.99. Is that cheap? It might be too cheap. Maybe it's too expensive. Um, ooh, these are warm from the fireplace. You can't see it, but the kitty is right down there, all snuggled up in his bed right in front of the fire. He loves it when I light a fire. Um, this is the first one I've ever bought. I know you know what this is, but... It's the first one I've ever seen in the wild. It's a Fire King McDonald's mug. And I just don't, I know these are a dime a dozen, but I, I never see them. So it's the first one I've ever bought. It was 50 cents and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it. This was 99 cents, which I picked up Saturday at a Goodwill store, as you can see, um, Pyrex. Banana yellow, um, is it the 401? It's the 401. I always pick up the little primary color bowls when I, when I find them. Um, I'm not a huge fan of milk glass. I don't buy much of it. There's a lot of it out there. I know people collect it. I'm not dissing it. Don't get mad at me. Milk glass collectors. Um, there's just not a lot of money in it. Um, if you're just, you know, for buying and reselling. I do pick them up when they say, the mixing bowls that say glass bake for uh, Sunbeam because people with their 1950s Sunbeam mixers, they want these that are actually marked uh, Sunbeam. So glass bake was, was glass bake Jeanette or McCoy? I think it's Jeanette. So it, it's glass bake and they made it for the Sunbeam mixers. This is the little one, there's a larger one. This should sell for almost 10 bucks. And it'll go with a, with a Sunbeam mixer. Uh, while I'm telling you that I don't buy milk glass, here's more of it. These are collectible without the awful Goodwill sticky tape, which we all hate because we have to soak these in our kitchen sinks to get that off. Um, here are four. These were $1.99. Um, but again, these were President's Day, President's Day so they were 50% um, off, one buck. Thank you, Abe Lincoln and George Washington. 
not just so that I could get my stuff for half price, but thank you for being great leaders in this country. Um, these are Fire King, and they're called, they're actually, they're, ouch, they're French casserole dishes, although a lot of people refer to them as chili bowls or um, like handled soup bowls. The correct term is French casserole. And you can clearly see the uh, Fire King, right? on the bottom. So I'll sell the four of those. 12 bucks, I don't know. This, um, I bought these because I felt sorry for them. And it was really a gamble, but when I went to check comps, and I don't really like to do that in the store. I'll, that'll be a topic for another video, but I am not one to stand in a thrift shop blocking the aisles 20 minutes going on eBay and looking at what sells and looking at what has sold. I like to do my homework before I go uh, or I'll go off to a... I told you I wasn't going to get into it. All right, I'm not. That's another video. So I bought these because they were cheap. They were a dollar each and I was really surprised later when I went online and saw that they do actually sell for, depending on how nice they are, 10, 15, 19 bucks each. They are, you can't tell what they are because you can't see, but I'm about to show you. It's a stack of anniversary plates. This is the 50th anniversary. Really nice with the gilding on it and the, uh, the little colonial, I guess it's supposed to be just little colonial people doing little colonial things. Isn't it pretty with the gilding? And this one is completely unmarked on the back. That's one of my favorite ones out of the whole stack. This one is as well. Here's a nice 25th anniversary. And I really like that, the pink, um, the bells. It's a decal, but there is some actually hand painting on it. And I don't know if you can see, but the little, like the white netting on there is actually hand painted. And it might show up in this light, but I can't really tell. This one just has a production number on the back. I don't know who made it. 25th anniversary? This one's okay. Um, this is a fine china, but I can't read that. Can you? Can you read that? I, I can't read it, so I don't know who made it. Again, these were a buck a piece. Here's another 25th anniversary. And this one is marked, actually marked Lefton, which we all know what that is. And it even has its part of its foil sticker. And one more, 25th anniversary. That's pretty. Right? And it has, it's also marked Japan on the back something Japan and Goodwill one dollar one dollar one dollar one dollar so I got a bunch of anniversary plates I also have six of these I think they're from the 1980s I don't really get into night I don't really sell things past the 60s once in a while I'll dip into the 70s but it, I have a category called vintage holiday and I don't have many things from Halloween so I thought, I'll get them. They were $3. No, they weren't. I got six of them and it was less than $3, but I can't remember. They are made by Libby. It's got the L, the L on the bottom. They're in great shape. So I hope someone will buy them for their next Halloween party. I got eight of these. Ruby Red Anchor Hocking, Georgian American Heritage collection tumblers <laughs> got a lot in there they're marked eight uh, anchor hocking on the bottom but you'll never be able to see it because it is tiny 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 and um, these were also for the half price President's Day sale I think the six did I say six no I got eight of these I think the eight of these were like two dollars for the eight 
because I got them half price. So um, I'm looking forward, forward to putting those on and getting about 30 bucks for them. This poodle was $1. He is not a salt and pepper shaker because there's no holes in his head. And all he does is sit on the shelf and look cute. He's made in Japan. See? I think the poodle was one of those um, sort of iconic 60s things. Two salt and pepper shakers, uh, probably Japan. I say probably because they're not, the, well, they're not marked on the bottom, but this one has the remnants of what was probably a Japan label, foil label. And they're just cute. No chips, no cracks. They're like little English uh, cottages. See? Don't look at my nails. I know I need a uh, manicure. I was working on a uh, Victrola motor, so repairing a spring in a Victrola motor, so my fingernails are a mess. But these are uh, salt and pepper shakers. These were uh, $2. President's Day sale thrift shop means I got them for one buck. They'll probably, I'll probably put them up for sale and ask 12 bucks, 12.99, something like that, I don't know. These things here, I'll just show you re really quickly. Um, I did some research on this guy, but I couldn't find much other than he's an independent illustrator. Uh, his name is Arnie Mossler. He did some work for magazines in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. These are dated 1963. And they're little plaques, little souvenirs that would be given to someone who was a friend. You know, if you, if, you, if you had a friend who was a bowler. Here, read them. I'll let you read it. Can you read it? I mean, I know you can read, but can you see it? And the graphics. And you can see they are signed and dated. Uh... It's hard to tell if this is focusing or not, but it is 1963. And here's the second one. Again, just cheap little gift items for someone who was a bowler. And he says, I cheat. He's got all these trophies and he admits to cheating. Again, 1963. So I guess someone who, um, I don't know. The Life of the Party coasters, these are kind of tacky. Um, there are eight of them, they're plastic, made in the 60s. You can just tell by the, by the graphics um, in their original cardboard, cardboard box. Um, these were $1.50. Where does it? Yeah. Uh, you can see here, coasters made in America, or made in USA. I'm not going to take them out, but you can hear that they're plastic. I'll let you read a couple of them. They're not really my taste. A little um, tawdry. Is that backwards? I hope not. You see that? Kind of vulgar. Adult humor. Um, so. But the graphics are very 60s. So, and they were cheap. And it's something I haven't seen before and I like, I like to find interesting things that I haven't seen before. Um, everybody knows what these are. I don't buy, I don't, um, well, anyway. I guess you could call them trivets or just the, the plate, the, the racks that Corningware would go in. They're all Corningware, and they all they are marked Corningware. So, I don't know how well that shows up. Uh, this is a little one, and then this one is a little bit, just a little bit bigger. So, because uh, of course Corningware could go from the oven to the table. So you would pull your hot Corningware plates out of the oven put them on these and go right to the table. So 
And here's one with wooden handles. So I'll probably bundle all three of these together and put them up for sale. This is the only piece of Corningware I've ever bought. There's so much of it out, out there. It seems like every time I go into a thrift shop, I always find, of course, the blue cornflower. This was so popular. They just, they must have sold a gazillion pieces in this pattern. I bought this because it is mint condition. I don't think it's ever been used and you don't see it quite as often. It's not as common as the casserole dishes. This is the big broiler plate and it comes on its original I'm calling it a trivet, but I guess it's just the tray that you would use. So, Corningware 1960s blue corn flour. You can see the you can see clearly the mark on the back. Advertising what it is. Um, again, look how clean that is. This hasn't been used, but how cool is it? Put this under your broiler. Put your pork chops on it. Pull it out of the oven. Throw it on this rack sachet out into the kitchen, out into the dining room, and look at the smiles on your family's faces. I didn't just break it. This is a German-made precision drafting tool. This I paid $5 for. It's gonna sell for between 65 and 85 bucks on eBay, because I've seen a couple of these sell already. Um, and that's what you look for, what has sold. Uh, it's a compensating polar, polar something. Um, and in, from 1949, it has the original instruction book. And you can see here, it's a really neat drafting tool. Doesn't really look like it, well, it doesn't have any wear on it at all. So, I'll let you know how that does. This should be, it smells like it's been in somebody's basement for, for 80 years. Um, this is an enamelware, what did I tell you in my last video to call this when you list it? Cream and green. That's cream and that's green. If you just put old enamel pot, you're gonna lose a lot of, you're gonna miss a lot of potential bitters because people search for cream and green. Remember all those cream and green utensils I had? Sold all of them. Uh, and this will sell as well. Here's a really neat, also 1930s um, hot pot with its original cord for somebody's vintage kitchen. Isn't that really nifty? I can just hear someone right now in 1932 or 1931 cursing Herbert Hoover. Although, you know, the depression really was not his fault. Um, he could have done a little bit more. We won't get into that. I love politics and I love history. But anyway, 1930s hot pot. This was cheap. This was cheap. I might try to sell them together. I don't know. I haven't decided. Sticking with the vintage kitchens, uh, moving up to the 1960s. Now listen folks, I have seen a lot of waffle irons at flea markets and most of the time they are nasty cruddy, covered in 60 years of old waffle remnants. Look how clean this guy is. I don't think he's ever been used. I don't think anybody ever made a waffle on this. I mean that is really nice. General Electric from early 60s, early to mid 60s, completely operable, plugged it in, heats up nicely. Um, it weighs a ton, but I only paid a few dollars for it. And uh, people love their, their vintage kitchen stuff. So that's mainly the reason why I picked it up is because it's in such great shape. Did I show you everything? Um, almost everything. Almost everything. Um, an update, my last, in my last thrift haul video, I showed you that I got 80, 80, 
that I purchased 24 pieces of Anchor Hocking Milano Lido avocado glass. Manufactured from 1959 through the 60s. Uh, I did sell all 24 pieces and I sold them all in just a couple of days. I was hoping to, I had three listings, eight, eight, and eight, and I was hoping to get about between $25 and $30 per listing. So I did sell all of it for $75 and I sold it all to one person. She bought, we, we made a deal and I sold her all three lots together. So it's nice for me, I only have to ship it to one person um, and she bought all of it at once. So I did sell all of it for $75 in just a few days, which is what I was hoping I could do. Um, here are my two flops for the week. Yes, I'm gonna show you how I messed up. Um, I didn't do my homework on these, and they are a bomb, because I'm not gonna be able to make any money on them, and that's not why I'm in, well, that's not good. I only buy puzzles or games or things like this if it's new in box and sealed but I found out that Country Trivia which I paid $3.99 for um, is gonna sell for $3.99 on the internet it's actually it might sell for $8 but you know I just don't want to pay $4 for something and, and sell it for $6 and then shipping and all that mess so I'll tell you what I'm gonna do with this in a minute this also flopped this was $4.99 and it probably would only sell for about 10 bucks on the internet. So, you know, when I say flop, I mean, I was really hoping that, you know, I, of course I want a nice big profit margin on everything, but it doesn't happen. Um, the profit margin on these is so little, it's not really worth my time and effort to post these. These are gonna go to a flea market. So I'll wait until the spring. We have really good flea markets in this area. And anything that doesn't, that I think, well, I'm not going to get that much online for it. It's not really worth listing it. I'll just put it, throw it all and take it all to a flea market and get my money back on it. Maybe make a couple of bucks. But, so I just wanted to show you a couple of the things that flopped. Uh, that's the, that's some of, oh, um, I also, I think that people who were putting all of their Christmas things away and, um, I think a lot of people decided to downsize. So I have been finding so much awesome vintage nifty Christmas stuff. The next video is just Christmas things that I've purchased in mid-January to mid-February. And I have a lot of it. And it's really cool stuff. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. I am Scott from the old Curiosity Shop on, on eBay. And uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful Sunday tomorrow, and I'll see you next time. So long for now.